Hello again, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Bigfoot Weekly. I'm Vic. Today is Monday, July 1st. We're already into July. I'm uh, here in Arizona. It's been hotter than hell. Really hot. But anyway, um, welcome again. Uh, I want to say thanks to all who view and subscribe. Um, and especially those who subscribed early were with me from the first or second video. And then to the regulars that always post, um, you know who you are. Um, I, uh, there were quite a number of comments, um, during the last video and I, I really appreciate that. I had a little bit of trouble keeping up, but I apologize to that. But my intent is to, you know, respond to as many of those as I can. Also, with regard to monetizing, uh, I have absolutely no plans to monetize any of these videos. It's not the, the reason why I started doing this. and um, So I just wanted to be clear about that. Thanks for keeping the comments clean and respectful. I did have to uh, delete a couple comments that were um, uh, that had some profanity in it and were, were kind of somewhat disrespectful and uh, posted again. I'll do it again. But anyway, thanks to all of you who keep it clean and respectful. Here we go. Okay, this first video was published by uh, Scott Carpenter. I'm sure everyone has heard of him. He's, I think he's fairly well known. He's got a ton of videos. And he's gone after Bigfoot, um, after Dogman, etc. And, and his videos, the cool thing about the way he does them is he also wears a, a back-facing camera on his shoulder. So it it uh, videotapes, or you know, it captures everything uh, via the area that he had just traveled through and he's captured some amazing stuff on that backward facing camera um, this video that he posted like three days ago is a solid 18 minutes of of um, just evidence and, and videos and uh, faces and figures and things that he's captured uh, during his expeditions and his his um, his research one of the other cool things about Scott Carpenter also is is that he investigates everything, every anomaly. You know, he searches it out. And uh, one of the things that he captured, you know, recently, earlier in the year, some of the videos he posted were of um, Bigfoots that appeared, appeared to be cloaked. In other words, he captured some things on his backward-facing camera that looked as though Bigfoots were, were either inside of a bush or a tree or shrub or you know were kind of a part of it and uh, when he went back to investigate that bush or tree or shrub it looked entirely different than what his back facing camera captured um, it captured the outline of a Sasquatch and the only explanation as to why it looked like it was part of the tree was probably this cloaking process at least that's the theory really interesting stuff I'm sure you guys have have been um, looking at his stuff it's really good stuff and this 18 minute video is it's, it's just all gold it's just nothing but um, video evidence of everything that he's captured it's pretty good stuff have a look at that next one was recommended to me by um, a subscriber and I, gosh I'm sorry that I I didn't look to to make sure the name but it was recommended to me uh, her name is Barbara Shoup and this woman lives in the Cascades, not far from Mount Rainier in Washington, in, in Washington State. And um, this video she posted, uh, oh, it's been over a month or so, or a couple months, uh, early May. But this video depicts, um, she takes it step by step as to where she actually had her first uh, Bigfoot encounter, where she saw the Bigfoot, and she had an, a really awesome description of this thing and she takes you all the way through the trail that she took and what she saw how she encountered it where she saw it and she actually saw it run behind that thicket of trees over there um, but it faced her for just a second or so and then turned left and, and then walked along that thicket of trees and um, you can see there she annotated that it looked like a giant gorilla and she described the head, the shape of the head, the hair, the hair on the back of the neck, down to the shoulders. I mean, she said she took in everything that she could just in that short time that she was able to, to see that Sasquatch. Anyway, she tells a really interesting story. She's very good at 
at setting up the video and taking you through it. It's just she's really good at this stuff. And check out her channel. She's got quite a few videos too, and they're all from that area. Um, well, there's a quick snapshot of her uh, channel. I'll post a link to her channel as well. Uh, Sasquatch Watch Episode One. This just recently posted. Uh, no, it's been longer than that. I apologize. I. I thought these guys were new, and I apologize because they said uh, this was episode one. They only have five videos and six, six subscribers, so I thought they were they were fairly new. But apparently, it's this stuff has been out there for a couple years, um, and maybe the subscribers are, are low because they quit posting videos. But anyway, on the comedic side of things, this is a 20, 27 minute, minute video, and these brothers really play well off of each other. One brother's you know got a lot of common sense; he's fairly quiet and he's smart. Uh, and doesn't get too loud or obnoxious, and the other brother is just is just uh, bouncing off the walls all the time. So it's kind of interesting to watch. Um, I didn't get all the way through the, the 27 minutes. I got about halfway there or so, but it was uh, it was entertaining. Uh, so check that out if you feel like having a laugh or two. This lady here, Linda Newton Perry. I'm sure uh, all of you know who she is, and have probably been and been watching her videos. Uh, from what I understand, she she had a Bigfoot column in a weekly newspaper, a weekly column in a newspaper. Up until recently, I heard that she that she retired, but she still stays abreast of everything that's going on in the Bigfoot news. And as of recent, uh, she uh, had posted a story about a 1962 storm in Oregon that um, somehow collapsed a tree on top of a Bigfoot, and I posted the newspaper article. And the newspaper article was descriptive enough that it sounded like a Bigfoot. They said it was uh, seven feet tall and that it was between six and eight hundred pounds. And I believe she actually heard from a relative of the person who wrote the article. So she gets, she gets, um, she's able to uh, get information, which is, uh, you know, a tribute to her abilities to um, kind of get to the bottom of a story. Um, and then she was able to get a copy of H.A. Miller's sort of manuscript or, or doc, manuscript or document where he talks about um, his work with these creatures and the only thing that was a little bit confusing to me about his paper was that I mean here's here's his writing and they did she was able to validate that there was a Dr. H.A. Miller that he in fact existed and and she got this paper from a relative the only thing that was confusing is is that in this paper he never really he did refer to these creatures as being large, uh, massive, I think he used as well. Um, but then he said they are scientifically known as Sibatilidae, Sibatilidae, or Sibatilidae. And um, Sibatilidae, first of all, there's not, it won't Google that way. It'll Google into two different words, and I'll show you in a minute. Um, he says, confirming that they're certainly not human, they were definitely a primate origin but with traits seen in various species of primate, most of which were New World Monkey. So New World Monkey, like a howl howler monkey, etc., they're fairly small primates, they're not that big, so it's a little bit confusing that he's associating uh, what appears to have been a Bigfoot with these New World Monkeys. Let me see if I can show you a picture. Here I've already um, put in Attila Day, Seba Day. So it's it, you can't Google it all at one word; it separates it, so it'll give you Sebaday, Attila Day, right? And it's they're all you know New World monkeys, and if you look at them, they're they look to be fairly small. A pygmy marmoset, spider monkey, howler monkey, capuchin monkey. You know they don't appear to be large. Uh, and here's a breakdown of some of the other terms that they use for for these monkeys. So that was a little bit it was a little bit disappointing um, that he did not go into the size and weight and true measurements of these animals. Um, but he did say that he examined that body. He also talked about another uh, Sasquatch. Uh, that he said he examined in the Northwest that was actually captured in, in captivity and unfortunately it didn't thrive. It died a few days later. So he also investigated that and he talked about what appeared to be uh, dual molars or really just, you know, sing a single row of massive molars 
Um, so there's a lot of good information that came out of his paper, but unfortunately, I, I just wish that he would have uh, put in the size and weight of the animals that he was examining, other than just call them large or massive. But this is really good work by by Linda, and my hat's off to you, Linda, if you're watching, for digging up all this stuff. It's it's really, really interesting stuff, and it gives us something to look at, talk about, and consider. So it's good stuff. If you haven't already looked at that, check it out. It's on her, um, it's on Linda's blog, and, and then, of course, she's got her video out, and I'm sure she's staying on top of what's next uh, with regard to that. So anyway, good job, Linda. Moving on then, a uh, little bit of bad news, and this really bummed me out. This came from, and it, this, like I said, this was just published hours ago, earlier in the day, and I'm not even clear as to who this person is uh, that wrote the article, but it was clearly one today. It's so Kron Sai Guy. Uh, I don't see his name in there, but he's writing about uh, Melva Ketchum's work and um, <clears throat> some of the flaws, right? That that are that her study, I guess, has. Um, it it wasn't the peer review didn't didn't go anywhere and then after that she published her published it herself and then was looking for additional funding and things like that that he he didn't feel were um, in keeping with strict guidelines for a study like this so read it yourself he gets his own uh, DNA expert to jump in and the the end result is not good um, and it just it's just not good in my mind it's a, it's just a huge setback. For the DNA, uh, the Bigfoot DNA study, I think it's a huge setback for for Dr. Meldrum. So I went to her Facebook and I posted this article and asked her if she would please comment. Is if this is bogus or untrue? Which it sounds like it's not. Okay, there's his name, Eric Berger. Um, and you know, I want to know if, if if this is that big a setback. Uh, I'm not sure if Dr. Uh, Ketchum will be able to get past this one. And it's unfortunate because I was really holding out hope that, that her DNA studies would really prove that these uh, Sasquatch are real and that they're a, a real species. So anyway, take a look at that. It was it was really disappointing. Anyway, I didn't want to end your night on a bummer, but but that, that was the latest uh, piece of news that I got. Uh, thanks again for watching. I appreciate that. Um, also open to recommendations or suggestions if you know of a, a new researcher who's doing some good things or maybe one who's not getting uh, maybe the attention they deserve or um, maybe one of the more obscure uh, researchers. Anything that, uh, that you feel is worthy of, of some attention, definitely if you would uh, recommend or suggest uh, via email, it's on my channel, or post on a comment, I'd appreciate it. Anyway, thanks again for watching. We'll talk again next week. Bye.